to see something or feel something, Amen. you're 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 believing something, and your belief motivates you to action, and then that action then triggers something in the realm of hello, in the spirit, in the realm of spirit. And they're little. Don't ever put down little uh, acts of faith. Even your acts when you give. Don't you know? See yourself when you give. That you're giving into the hands of, of, the, of the Father. You're giving into the hands of Jesus. You're, you're offering up to Him your your heart, your love, your life. That's right. You're not just you know doing going through some kind of ritual, but release your fight. You can release your fight. Fight does work. Amen. Because it releases fight. <coughs> releases Christ. Christ is the power of God to do what you can't do. That's right. It's not only the favor of God. It's the power of God to do what you know that you you're called to do. And that you, you sense in your spirit that you must do, and but you don't have the abilities uh, in your natural self to do. But God is grace and graceful and merciful to give us grace. Amen. 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 Grace. God's riches in Christ. Grace. Amen. Grace. Amen. Grace. So there, are, there. Are, uh, you see, the Old Testament, the the the, the, prophet, the prophets did many things. They they, they did prophetic acts. You know, there's crazy stuff. You know, one prophet actually was told by the Lord to cook cook a meal over his own uh, excrement. <laughs> that sounds pretty gross, doesn't it? One guy was he was called walk around naked for a certain time. I mean, how about an embarrassment to his family? I mean, aren't you glad we live in a new covenant? Amen. Yeah, you know, the, the Lord told me, He said, you know, Richard, I want you to preach naked next time. <clears throat> and what embarrassment that would be to my family and to my own self because I don't look at good naked. <laughs> uh, you know, there's prophetic acts, but thank God, you know, but there's, there's still acts of, of prophetic acts. Mm -hmm. There are. I believe the, 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 the Word of Faith movement preceded the prophetic movement. It, it prepared us. It was, now instead of confession, we talk about decrees, prophetic right. decrees. Which it, is, it is a confession of your faith, but it's what God said. In order to hear the Word of the Lord and to speak the Word of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Before maybe we were writing, reading somebody's book and confessed it, but now we're listening, we're listening to, to what the Lord said by His rhema Word, and we're speaking it out. Amen. And giving birth to it because he wants us to give give birth to it. You're a birthing. You are a birthing chamber yes. for the the spirit of God through His seed, His divine sperma, to release into the earth, the seen realm, that which is in heaven, as it is in heaven, so it be on the earth. Amen. 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 So we don't have that. That was good. Well, that was good. It's shaking. We got to get to the. You got to get this thing. This, this word shaking. I've heard so many people preach on shaking, and you never realize the heavens <clears throat> must be shaken. What's that mean? He, sh the Lord wants to shake out. That's right. uh, it's like shaking a tree. If you think, if you could imagine a tree that had a, was full of devils, and the Lord took an angel and shook that tree and shook them out. You know, it shook them out. You know. Is they're falling, just falling, and falling. Right. He shake whatever he's going to shake. He's going to shake is the stuff that is hindering you right. Right. and holding you back Amen. from uh, the, your purpose in God, right. or you're allowing. So it's not a, it's not a bad thing. Don't don't associate shaking with a bad thing. Amen. Now your flesh might not like some of the stuff, but that see we got to understand that, that we, we the flesh is something we have to crucify. That's right. You know, you don't have to crucify yourself. You know, that's your spirit. You crucify the flesh. That's the selfish desire of your selfish desires. Yeah. Your own self-centeredness, which we still all have to deal with. God wants Amen. us to deal with that. Yeah. How many of y'all want to see? How, I don't know. How many of y'all want to see the glory? Amen. Amen. You have an understanding of the glory. The you want to see the manifest presence of Almighty God. I mean, I mean, the word says he said his glory is in this place. He said a long time ago, his glory is in this place because his glory, first of all, is in you. That's Listen, right. it's in you. Amen. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you. You've got to quit the, the weight of the glory to come down and understand the glory's got to come out. Amen. 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 And sometimes it takes a shaking 
to get you to a place where you're, you're, you're released to glory, become conscious of glory. Greater is Jesus within you than he is in the world. Amen. Amen. So as an act of, uh, uh, of, of let's, say, let's say this together, let's, let's confess this, say, Father, Father, <coughs> open your word, open open your word, word to, to, us. to us. Give us hearing ears, touch your ears. Hear 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 ears. <laughs> Give us burning hearts. Burning burning hearts. hearts. To receive instruction, to receive instruction in righteousness. In righteousness. Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit, you teach us. You teach us. Lead us in the paths. Lead us in the paths of immortality. Of immortality. Eternal life. Eternal life. Ministering spirits. Ministering spirits. We loose you. We loose you. To do what you are created to do. To do what you are created to do. To minister for us. Minister for, minister for me, minister for who me. is an heir, who is an heir of salvation. Of salvation. We forever, we forever, we no, excuse me, we forbid, we forbid any interference, any interference by the adversary, by the adversary or his agents, or his agents from causing us, from causing us not to speak. To, and to hear clearly, to, hear clearly. And to see clearly, to see clearly. Add to me life, add to me life. Multiply to me, multiply, to, multiply to, me. to us, multiply to us. Your glory, your glory. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Did you see me say it right quick? Praise God. Let's see what time it is. Praise the Lord. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I had something. I had it to read, but I lost it. So praise God. If you can't find your place, it's got directions over there. On the yeah, I know. I was just thought it was something to ask for the right thing. How to find your place. The Lord, I told the family yesterday, we are, uh, yesterday morning, this, there are times that uh, you have times of, I don't know about you, I go through seasons of, sometimes it seems like, you know, I'm not even saved. Yep. And, and there's seasons of, that, that just, rubble, the revelation will just start downloading. And, mm -hmm. and uh, Last it happened to me last week, and then all hell broke clear. I'm telling you, I, I, I was praying. I came out there praying. I went home, and the Lord started downloading some stuff to me. And then when I say download, it's just like it comes to it comes just like in you know, just a few seconds. But it, it it's a lot of stuff. And uh, I, I get on easy. Get on. I got a Bible, Bible program in my in my word processor, and I'll I'll just try to copy and paste because it gives me scriptures. You'd be going on with it. So I just copy and paste, copy and paste. And I mean, I, I worked on that. And I just, I, it's like, it's like I'm having to look over my shoulder. I'm just waiting for it, you know. <laughs> Not expecting something bad to happen, but I, I've been around long enough to know. And no sooner as I put the save, hit the save, save as, and send it to my Dropbox account so I get to have it on there, and then all hell broke loose, you know, started breaking loose. And, uh, Stuff started happening. It just it just went on, and uh, through the night and the next day, and I can, I, I remember I got there just that Sunday morning, last Sunday morning, and came down here and I said I got to get away, get away and pray. And I was, I was praying in the spirit, and my uh, my telephone. I, I put my uh, my phone on. It has a timer on it for an hour, and I, and I was, it's a, there's a one song that just goes over and over. I said I'll leave, I'll leave. It's it's just it's a it's a it's just it's a, it's a good song. It's just a, it's the old hey Bob hey over and over the old hey Bob. This is all it is. It's a real worship it's in fact. So I can pray in tongues. And you no know, sooner than I turned that phone on the phone rang, the messenger notification, you know, Facebook messenger came on, and it it would go make like that, and I'd go I'd run over there and I'd get to it, and by the time I get to it, go off. And I could go there, I guess. It, it went on like four or five times, and I finally, just, I finally beat it over and got it, and it was, <clears throat> God bless it, it was my niece. Because I, I got to thinking, it was, she would be the only one to be calling me this time of day. And I thought, we've, had, we've dealt with so many emergencies and stuff of late, but down in Mexico, with um, Frank's health, he's dead mother, but it was health and stuff. So it was sure enough it was her. And boy, I just I went off on her. I said, what the heck are you doing, Carol? Because it wasn't my mind was it wasn't an emergency. She just wanted to call. And say, what are you doing? 
God bless her. It took her a week to, she, she stayed on me for a week. She, we talked to her the other night, and I just, just must have just blew her away. I mean, I didn't mean to, but I just like, I, I had it up a year ago. And I was trying to get, get right with God so I could preach to them. And <laughs> she just wanted to call us blame. Because they'd had, they'd had their, uh, they've got solar, you know, they've had solar for about three years which has been a real blessing for them to have electricity. But the, as, it, as with every mechanical device, the inverter, uh, something happened to the inverter. It, it's got a computer board or chip, in, or chip in there or board in it. And, and uh, they had to take it in and have service. They found some other service because we, we wired with some money. It really wasn't that much money to, to fix it. But when they went to pick it up, it's in Mexico, everything suddenly doubles when you get ready to pick up your stuff. Because you know? this bird is worth a lot of money, so they had gotten it. So they uh, called it. That was Saturday, after we had some other incidences occur the flight plane. So Papa went to the to the Kroger and we wired the amount of money they needed. There was, there, the place was getting ready to close. So the Western Union this money to go. It, was, it wasn't that much, it was like $65 or something. And that's about all I had in my pocket was $65 or something. But Pam, when she went to wire, she, somebody felt prompted to the Holy Spirit. Now this, this is where you need to learn what you give. Is, yeah, I don't know, but more, I believe in time. And that's, that's a set thought, you know, you don't really have to pray about it. You pray over it and believe God. But your, your giving is where the blessings really are. You're giving that is motivated by the Holy Spirit. You're seeing someone. You find you, you got me. So she uh, she just felt led to put in an extra twenty dollars. She had twenty dollars. And then I'm sorry. See, that's what I get across to you. It, 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 don't don't despise small things. You take twenty dollars that much money. <clears throat> but she put that extra. She came back. She told me, you know, she put the extra twenty dollars. Just buy your money. Put what you want to. And uh, she was calling to fight me, but I didn't let her. But then I got, we talked to her last night. And what happened is when they went to pick the inverter up, you know, they, of course they didn't have, and then they got the money, they got the inverter, they were so happy. By the time it was almost 9 o'clock at night, so they're coming on. It's not real safe to drive in Mexico at night, and uh, especially if you live out in the country. So they're coming down this old dirt, it's a dirt road that goes from their house. <coughs> In a uh, little town called Mandanero, and you come and go to Ensenada. And I used to ride, I love this, this dirt road. This is my dirt road. And I used to have a truck down in Inter Mo International. I was driving up Mandanero. It's like being in Mississippi, but I was going up, you know, driving a truck down the dirt road. I love, I love dirt roads and trucks. <laughs> and so, believe it or not, they were, they, they're coming back this back way down this dirt road. And then all of a sudden they look up and there's a four-way stop. The now you have to understand, this is like being out in the middle of a cotton field in the Delta, going down a dirt road, and all of a sudden there's a four-way stop. On a dirt road. Or a dirt road. <laughs> Can I get this across to you? Yep. And, and so Frank, you know, he's just going down a dirt road, and he, he sees it, it startles him, and he just kind of, he slows down, and he, what would you do? Nine o'clock at night in the dark on a dirt road, you roll on to it, you would expect it. Well, there was a, guess what? There was a federality sitting right there waiting for somebody to roll through that stop sign. It was a, what we call it, a scam. And she said, they stopped him. They said, why'd you run through this stop sign? And they're like, it's like, they're, you, you can't, it's like, this is, you can't be happy. The dirt road and the four-way stop and a police one. And at nine o'clock on, and two kids in the back. And two kids in the back seat. Two, two Indian kids. <laughs> and they're scared to death of the, of the police. They've got right to so You've got the cartel, you've got the military, you've got the police, and all three of them kids. And uh, so they got Frank out of the car, put him in the back of the car. <laughs> and started, you know, just in, interrogating him, just harassing him, you know. And finally, he just he said, I, well, I know what's going on. So she had the $20. Thank God for the 20 Thank God for the Holy Ghost. 
Amen. She took the twenty dollars, got out of the truck, he said, Is this what you want? They said yes, and they left one go and went home. So if she hadn't heard from the Holy Ghost, it added that extra twenty dollars because they didn't have any money. They were getting ready to take him to jail. They're gonna get their pine and flesh one way or another. And uh, so praise God for that. So what's it all about? This that you know, that's learning to listen. To listen to the Spirit of God. You know, in your in your giving or in, for that matter, everything in your life. I said this there is shaking coming. I've said this. I, I can go back to this book right here and I've got stuff written in there. And I, I read it to people years years ago and they just shook their head at me. And uh and some of it is it, scary. It's about dark times. It's about dark things. But, but they miss the part about the Lord said, but there shall be a shining light. Yep. In the midst of the darkness, there will be, be a light in the darkness. You know, it will shine forth as, you know, as, a, as, a, as a light in a dark place. And, and, the, and the, the people will be drawn, to, not to us, but to, to the Lord. You can't have, you can't have. Uh, light show up good unless there's darkness around. Right? So, you know, we we tend to, the, the word came to about, about opportunity written, written in that. Comfort is something we all want. We all want to be comfortable. And uh, I tell you right now, we're not, we're not, we're not put down here to be comfortable. We work our, most people work their whole lives to come into a comfortable position. Or they can feel safe, secure, <coughs> uh, comfortable without God. Not realizing it. But, but we work that way. It's like, God, I keep getting it. If I get enough money, well, I don't have to blame God. <laughs> the worst thing that ever happened to you. Fortunately, you know, I prayed that dumb prayer a long time ago. Lord, have your way. <laughs> I said, what are you trying to do, kill me? He said, yes. <laughs> this, this, uh, Alex George says his, his marriage counseling consists of this. I, could, I can't repeat it verbatim, but he says, basically he says, he says, you two are going to be joined together so, so, that, so that you can kill each other. And that's God's plan. In other words, he's talking about you're going to, you're going to kill one another's flesh. Yeah. Not your own life. And, and your own selfishness and your own self-centeredness. That's what marriage is all about. Marriage is not about living happily ever after. It's about it's about you coming into a place where you're you're not the center of the world. Amen. You know that scripture says in devil it says that it says in child marriage you shall be saved. And we we still know that that scripture, our understanding of it, that and finally, she had four or five children, and, and several of them were miraculous and without pain and stuff. And then we still know the scriptures. That's the way we understood it, you know. That we'd be saved, she'd be saved in childbirth. You know, that she'd be delivered in childbirth from the pain and the curse. And we believe still believe that. But I also know that Paul was talking about that, that, that women, are, that some women, there's one right there. It was saved in childbirth and it turned them from a self-centered, selfish person until they got this this thing that's utterly helpless and dependent on you. You know, I'm not, I've never been a mother, so I don't, I'm, not, I'm just speaking from, from observations. But you have this totally dependent on you. Mm -hmm. And you can no longer be the center of your universe any longer. Amen. You know, exactly what you, you have, and you're and you're literally being saved. See, saved is more than just getting born again, going to heaven. Saved is being delivered from your 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 self-centered uh, life. Amen. I like one 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 brother described his lead lead who said, "You get more you get born again by believing and believing on Jesus. You believe Jesus died, he was, he was crucified, dead, buried, and Christ is dead. You get born again, confess." But to make you the Lord is different. The Lord you know, is, is consciously taking, consciously 
If you visualize, see your imagination, your visualization is like you think we just new age stuff. No, God gave you an imagination to see things. That's why you begin to see things. Visualizing that your heart, or there's a throne on your heart. If you didn't know it, there is a throne on your heart. A throne is a place where the ruler or the king abides. Well, to an un, un I won't say unsaved because a lot of Christians are this way. They still have, they have their, their selves sitting on the throne of their heart. Do you follow them? They still like, they call the shot. It, it, to some extent, what I want to get into is to some extent, well, this is something we, we, we have to deal with every day. The dethroning of you and the enthroning of Jesus. Amen. Of Yeshua. Right. Amen. Upon the throne of the rulership of, of your heart. That's why Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. Amen. Say, the kingdom Amen. of God is within you. He said the kingdom of God does not come with observation. He said it doesn't come with by you know, something that's going to, some great blood money or some, some of this other crap. You can break money and sell the books off, you know. Sign. Come on, I'm talking about, he said, he said that thousand years, he said the kingdom of God is within you. He's saying that the, the, the kingdom is there. Now who, who's on the throne of the kingdom? Amen. If you want it to work right, you have to have the right, the right kingdom. Are you following? Yep. For the kingdom of God is what? Righteousness, peace, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. You can pretty much determine who's <coughs> sitting on the throne of your heart as, as a ruler. By those three things, righteousness. That's just not just, just your ability to come before God without a sense of guilt or shame or, or inferiority. But thank God for that. Amen. But righteousness is, is is being able to do but also doing it, being able to do what's right. Amen. You know, be a righteous person is is more than just being right with God. It's being righteous with people. That's right. When a person said this year, the cross goes like this. It's for a purpose. We, you're righteous this way between you and God, right? But then it go, if it has, it has this, this horizontal, this horizontal. It means that between each other, we're right with each other. God came to, so to reconcile us not only to Him, but to be record, ministers of reconciliation with ourselves, first of all, which is one of the hardest things, is to reconcile yourself. Because you know how to beat yourself up worse than anybody else to. Be reconciled. Love God. Learn to love yourself. And then you can love other people. And if you get it out of order, it ain't gonna work. Sure. Amen. I'll tell you this is valuable stuff. Amen. Love, learn to love God. Love God. With all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. And love your neighbor as Love your neighbor as, love your neighbor as yourself. Love them just like you love yourself. So if you don't love yourself, and I say love, I'm not talking about, you know, we talk obviously talking about God kind of love. Come back love. Forgiving love. A decision, you know, accept yourself. And you think God didn't work on you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So let me read this to you. I'm supposed to be sitting down, but I'm not. <coughs> well, I sat down last week and all my family thought I was dying, so. <laughs> I wore an old shirt because it was hot, and it was one I had for I lost a lot of weight, and so I looked like a, a stick man, you know. I was sitting down on the stool and said, what's wrong with Daddy? It's all hurt. I got home. What's wrong with Daddy? Is he sick? Is he going to die? <laughs> Such faith. What do you got? This was one of the things the Lord spoke to me around me. Yeah, listen, Yahweh's great desire, you know, understand, I, I think I can speak to y'all here, you know, Yahweh's what I call the Father of God. You, right. you call him Jehovah or whatever you want to think of. Yahweh's, like, you know, they that. Yahweh, Yahweh's great desire, His will, is to, is to have a body, listen, to have a body in which He can express Himself. That was a revelation to me. That's what the whole thing, you know, sacrifice, sacrifice, Hebrews says, sacrifice and offering I did not desire, but a body. Yeah, that's referred to Jesus 
first, but it's referred to us secondly, because we're all the body of Christ. And that gets his revelation came to him. That's 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 Yahweh's whole deal. He wants to he's spirit. God is spirit. Amen. And I won't say that you was translated one plus a spirit. He's not a spirit, he is spirit, because he is spirit. You know what I mean? God is spirit. But his desire is to express himself in physicality. Mm -hmm. In the material world. We're thinking the material world. Religion thinks the material world or the solid world is evil. That's Greek, that's Greek philosophy. Mm -hmm. that, that's where dualism, what's called dualism comes from, where you separate spirit from body. That's why uh, people, uh, that's why the church, part of the reason the body of Christ is in a mess now is because of that, that Greek mentality, that Greek philosophy of, of dividing the spirit from the, the natural. That's why you, you have church and then you have life. You, you separate your life from church. Well, you know, church is a bad translation, it's ecclesia, ecclesia which means a body that's called out, a group of people that are called out of the world in order to, to govern. What are we called to govern? We're called to govern, our, first of all, our lives. Government's not a bad word. Government's become a, a, an obscene word, really. Everybody hates the government. They don't, they're tired of government. But government is a good word. It says in, in I believe it's Isaiah prophesied about Jesus, said the government shall be on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. The government shall be on his shoulders. And you wear the shoulders. Where are your shoulders? On your body. Where is it? Who's the body? It's us. Just like the other way, the pages, he put all things under under, the, under his feet. But you're on the body. Are you getting that? I'm talking, I can talk to you all. It's, it's no... I'm, you're, it's good to talk to y'all because y'all can get there. He wants a body. He wants to express himself. He, that's daddy's desire. That's his desire. That's what daddy wants. You, you care what daddy wants? I mean, come on. I know, hell, uh, no, I'm going to go home and go to bed. <laughs> I know you know, what your flesh wants, but I know deep down your heart, if you really say you want, want the will of God in your life, well, the will of God, the will of Yahweh, the will of the Father, of your daddy, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, is he wants a body to express itself through. Now, that's a corporate body, but, but it has to be made up of individuals that all have that same desire, or, they can, or they're not going to be in unity enough to express a corporate desire. You follow me? Yeah, there are in, we're individuals in here right now that we let's say we do want, if you get an understanding that you think, don't you think about this? God's will, the creator of the universe, his he wants to express himself through a perfect people. I and, and I tell you he I can to you the first his first example was Jesus. You follow? Me? His first example of Jesus. Jesus, when Jesus, Jesus said, You've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen. Who was he talking about? That's not the upper one, one of this Pentecostal should have taken it away. They said, That shows there's no try. You ever tell the God is this one? No, he, was, he said, No, I'm a full expression. He said it in Hebrews. He said, He was the ex ex exact full expression of God, of God, the invisible God. So, Jesus was the firstborn among many. And that's why they call us Christians. Christians was, was actually a put down. You know, they meant little Christ. You look at those little Christ running around. You know, the heathen were making fun of them because they were acting like Jesus. Now, they, were, they weren't acting like Jesus. They were acting like Jesus. I mean, they were doing the stuff. They were laying hands on the sick. They were raising the dead. They were, they were manifesting miraculous power that no human being could have. The glory has been manifest through them. Yeah, you follow me. They had to, and they, and they said, they're little, little Christ, little anointed one. Look at them. They were making fun, mocking, but they were telling the truth. Now, you can't hardly do that today. 
from a Christian. You can't hardly do it. And it's as simply this. And I'll talk about, when I talk about this, I'll talk about myself. Also, I'm not pointing the finger at you. That, that we, it's, it's, a, it's a constant deal with uh, laying down your life to let the Father's will be done. Amen. Listen, the, the church has been, it was good to learn, learn who we are in Christ. We need to learn that. We, a, a term that was used a lot was know your rights and your privileges. And you should know your rights. You have the right, you have the privilege to be healthy. You have the right, the privilege to, to have your needs met. Those are good things. But like with any entitlement comes an attitude, if you don't watch it, of, of deserving something without giving something back. I mean, the, the, the welfare system in, in our nation has saved a lot of people from being hungry, thank God. It's virtually destroyed whole people groups because it took away their, uh, their initiative. It took it stole from them. Thank God a lot of, a lot of people wake up for this. You know, they say, you don't understand what I say entitlement? Well, we're entitled to this, we're entitled to this. <coughs> Listen, <coughs> you are you're entitled to take responsibility for your life. <laughs> Amen. Now this is the word of the Lord to you. Listen to me. I want you to listen. If, 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 you, if you do not make a decision that you're going to take responsibility for your life and you're going to quit blaming everybody else for your problems, you're not going to make any progress. If, if Adam in the garden, just think of this, if, what would happen if Adam in the garden had just said, when he heard, because he hid himself after he'd sinned, he disobeyed. He hid himself. We talked about talked about this. He hid himself when he heard Yahweh or heard the Ruach Kodesh, the Holy Spirit walking in the garden. And he hid himself. They hid, they hid himself because, and he he called out Adam, where are you, Adam? You know when he's saying Adam, he was talking to both of them because Adam is man and woman. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that when you're talking about Adam is man kind, man, male and girl. He said, where are you? Did you, you? Don't you know that God knows that you knew where they were? Surely he knew where they were. If he got down to you, what? He was asking them the question. Because unless you, you actually ask yourself the question, where are you? You'll never think about where you are. That's right. Where am I? I mean, if you can recall back in your, your wicked past before you became, became so holy, did you ever wake up? I can remember one time, well, I was bad at drink, man, I'm you, especially as a teenager. And we had a, 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 two, two of my buddies, one of them was Del Lido's dead. And he may be watching me on, because he walked, he, he, he's a Facebook friend. He may say this, we would go out every Thursday night and buy a fifth of, of, of Rebel Yale whiskey. And he's, we was teenagers. And you don't smile at me like that. I said, I, I ain't going to say anything. I'm going to shut up. And we would drink that fifth of whiskey. Now, now back then, a fifth of whiskey, now, I, mean, I, I got working about a fifth of whiskey by myself. But back then, three, three of us, a fifth of whiskey would get us pretty lit. You know? Plus, we'd like a couple of six back in the years. Chase it up. And I remember waking up. <laughs> we were in Chicago, Mississippi. Driving it, my, his buddy, my buddy had a, a, I think it was a Montego, Mercury Montego, it had some kind of big, uh, like a 429 or something like that, but, you know, the hair shifter and everything. And we, we went off the road and went over the ditch, it, right in the middle of the children. And we was in the ditch, the car was turned up like this, and we were like this, yes, we were fast out. <laughs> and, and somebody, Freaking out, they ran up to it, they saw it, they ran up, you know, knocking on the window, looking down, you know. You ever see the cars turn like that? And we both came aware at the same time. You know, we woke up. 
and he just he he just he reached over and cranked it, put it in first, and I don't know how long he came up out of that ditch. That car flew up out of that ditch. <laughs> I don't know. It was it was supernatural the way that car came up out of that ditch. But we all of a sudden we realized where we were. <laughs> we had been drunk. We had been unconscious. And until we came to where we were, we couldn't get out of where we were at. Do you follow? Because we 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 didn't we, we become intoxicated, you understand? But you can become intoxicated with other things besides liquor and drugs and alcohol. You can become intoxicated with yourself. You can become, you become so preoccupied with yourself that you don't know where you're at. That's what God said. He said to Adam, he said, Adam, where are you? Where are you? And Adam, you know, he said, you know, we you know, we were we're hiding ourselves because we're naked. And, and, and the Lord says, Who told you you were naked? Boy, who told you? He was conscious. He'd come to he'd come to self consciousness. That's what the prayer of knowledge going in good and evil is. It's it's the knowledge of self. It's the ego. It's your ego. It's your pride. It's your self preservation uh, desires. It's your Dog eat dog. It's what causes people to do some of the crazy stuff they do. And don't say they, they get on the news, but we're doing the same thing, you know. It's just all, all about us. All about us. It can, it can become, if you do not actively do this, which we'll get there. All right, let's go to Romans. Well, all right, let's. Did I, I finish right now? He wants a body. Do y'all go home? Do y'all go home? A body which he can, listen, he wants a body in which he can rule and reign in this material world, the kingdom. The body must, listen, the body, now we think individually, the body, did I get us out of this? We're out of this. I found out where I was, right? Somewhere in here. Somewhere, Somewhere in here. Now I ended up here preaching. <laughs> <coughs> this is my funny. Anyway, <laughs> this is your punishment. You, you ever think, what did I deserve to get this guy? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Don't blame me. <laughs> uh, the body, right. this is the body which he can rule and reign in the material world. The body, this is the body must submit to the spirit. Yeah, I got that name from the frog. The body must submit to the spirit. Amen, that's right. Do you realize that, that when Adam, before the fall, his spirit was on the outside? He was clothed in glory. When you say, shut up, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so he kill it, bro. <laughs> they had squirrels, they were getting frogs. <laughs> what kind of place is this? Uh, if you don't praise God, all the rocks are going to cry out. The frogs are going to cry out. <laughs> Nature loving. It's a nature loving church. Is he in the house? He's in the house. He's in the house. He's in the house. We're going to let him. We're going to let him. We're, we're open to all, all type of people and creatures. We let all these other creatures in here. So. These other creatures in here, you saw me, you scared you. Uh, <laughs> You God got a really so good sense of humor. Right. All angels are not sweet looking <laughs> beings. So scared. Why do you think that some of them said, Don't fear? <laughs> fear not. It's like, are you an angel? <laughs> or you're a devil? Or what are you? Are you a, right. You're scary. Right. <laughs> Why do you think they said that? I've seen words. Seen words. Yeah. Yeah. See words. Hey boy. <laughs> a body which you can rule and reign in the material world. A body must submit to the spirit. <clears throat> but it passes, listen, this is where the deal is. Your spirit had the information you gather in your spirit has to pass to get to your body has to pass to your mind. Amen. Okay. The problem is like like George Byers wrote years ago, you know, the battlefields in the mind. Mm -hmm. You have a free will. 
You have a free will. The Lord designed it that way. This, this, this is his, this is his master plan. He's got. That's what, what caused this. Is, well, who said this? It was, uh, uh, you have to look it up. Genesis. It was the second day. You know, I won't get into that. He, he didn't say it was good. That was the day that the angels discovered that what God's plan was to make man. And that, and some of them. That's what I told you. I said this. This is why they, they. The third and fail. They couldn't understand what this deal is. They, you know the Bible actually said that, that angels still look in and watch, and yeah. you're angels and still look in and watch to, to see the plan of salvation because yeah. they don't understand it. You think you don't understand it, but they don't really understand it. They can't figure it out because they're created and they're awesome beings. Awesome beings. And here, 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 Yahweh, here, Daddy God, has got this bunch of, 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 of dirt. Now, I'll change on that, you know, There's one person that says that, 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 that we were made from the, you know, there were four reef, the four rivers that, that flowed out of the feet. And one of them was, it said the gold there was good, it was like this. That, that, that he formed Adam. Not out of dirt, what we call it dirt. He formed more gold dust. Mm -hmm. That's what the, all that stuff, the gold dust was in glory. It's manifest. His glory is on the outside. And Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Remember it said, it said his, he became like white, glowing white. Mm -hmm. And then, then Elijah and Moses from there, you know, because they didn't have that. And then what they well, I just take it off and work out you know, of the chariot. And Moses, they said, God buried him, but he never saved him. You know, he can't speak. He can't speak. The glory is all I said. But you have to go through the line. So God's got this plan. He says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get somebody. I'm going to make you my image and my likeness. And it's gonna be it's gonna be such a, a a wonderful thing, but it's gonna be so hard to fix this thing. Because he already had experience with angels. So that's why he's he looking for a body that's gonna that's going to stick with him freely, freely, through their own free will. They're going to they're going to be his friend. They could, they're going to be his sons and daughters. Do you listen? Yeah. His sons and daughters. I'm talking about, I'm talking about a relationship that is, that is so wonderful and spectacular that the Creator, He created, that right now in the last count, is there's over a trillion, trillion galaxies in the universe. And as, as the psalmist said, what is man? that you're even considering him. Why are you concerned about it? You see, that's why all these people that are running around all these crazy socialist, communist, whatever, atheist stuff, you know, they, they hate people. They'd rather save a trick for them than with you. Because they don't understand. They don't know God. God's not in their heart. They don't, they don't, the knowledge of God's not in them. They don't understand God's plan. They don't understand how wonderful and how marvelous is the way the Father looks at human beings. No matter what state they're in, because he knows he created them in potential. That's what the prophecy is, is, is speaking the potential of God. A true prophecy, just like you speak the potential, that's what God, he, that's his desire. I mean, you, you got, but he got the free will stuck in there, see? That goes in your, that's in your mind, that's in your soul. He's got that because you, he leaves it up to you where you want to be what he wants you to be. Amen. That's right. He don't make you do anything. That's right. God, well, God made you do this. No, God, you're lying out, you, are you here just, you're willfully lying or you're ignorant. God didn't make you do anything. That's right. Now, he can't arrange circumstances to promise you. Now, I grant you that now. Yeah. But he, 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 he can't, a devil can't make you do something. It'll crap. The devil might do it. 
you can tell them that Satan certainly can't make you know. He can make your life miserable and you give in or you you lust and your own lust and your own flesh will give in to whatever. But no. This is all I'm gonna talk about, so don't forget this word. <laughs> Listen, the body is got the body must sub submit to the spirit. You understand it, but in the fall everything got turned around. The spirit was on the outside and it got retreated to the inside. And then, the, then what you you live in the world, it, listen to me, you, what you live in the world with, and or guiding with, with, if you don't have the knowledge of God, you, you're, it's your senses, your sense knowledge, your, what you hear, hear, smell, taste, you know, your senses. I feel, and, 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 and then it goes, that goes into your soul, and your mind, your mind, part of your soul, and, and you know, your emotions. You know, I feel this, I feel this, we're ruled by this, we're ruled. There's nothing wrong with emotions. God created emotions. Emotions which can lead you into an ecstasy, uh, uh, if you, as it were, a rapture. Not of disappearing and flying away, but in, in being caught up in the ecstasy of the presence of Almighty God. That, and that's where everything gets involved. Spirit, soul, and body gets up. You feel it. You get the goosebumps. You know, you get to, you understand? That's great. That's good. But the, the, it used to be the body, the, the body now hosts the spirit. The spirit's on the inside. But you can you can actually you could actually <coughs> learn to allow the Holy Spirit to move the help move the spirit, your spirit, out. And then your spirit can be can get too great for it. Your spirit can begin to host your body. That's right. That, that, that's where miraculous things happen. That's where that's where you get I mean actually that's what healing is. And I'm part of healing is your spirit, your spirit man moving to the outside and healing your own body. Wow. Thanks, you got it. Okay. So the body must submit to the spirit. No, he's talking. He said, <clears throat> but it has to pass through the mind. The mind, that's why we're talking about, we've been talking about the mind must be renewed. The mind must be renewed. In order for you what? So you will be conformed to the world, will be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that what? That you can prove what the will of God is. You can actually prove it. Because when, it, when your mind's renewed, then it, you don't have that, that standing. Whatever, whatever the grace of God you're walking in right now, is a result of some part of your mind has been renewed. That's right. That's right. And so that that part of your saved, born again spirit can be released out through your body and manifest. I mean, that's what the fruit of the spirit is. The fruit of the spirit is not the whole fruit of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't need to, to bear any fruit. It's the fruit of the of the born again, recreated human spirit. That's right. And there's no capitalization in. You know, the translators capitalize it. Fruit of the Spirit is the fruit of your spirit, of you abiding in Christ with a renewed mind. And what's the what's the fruit? It bears fruit outwardly. Are you following? What is that? You can tell. You can tell if someone's how how how, how renewed someone's mind is by the fruit of the, of the Spirit. That's right. Which is first of all, love. All of them based on love. I got for love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness. What things name them to? The nine fruits, like the nine gifts. Yeah. So the nine gifts or graces of the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit for them. Really. But they're nine fruits that are produced by your your human spirit that abides in in the glory. And you don't have to try to do this stuff. You don't have to try to be patient. You don't have to try to have joy. You don't try. You don't have to try to. You understand? That there's no effort in it. It is a fruit. A fruit is a result of what? Uh, you, you go to a fruit tree. It's a tree. Let's say an apple tree. It's an apple tree. It, it gets enough water and enough nourishment. It's going to produce what? Fruit. Apples. 
And, you know, and Jesus talked about that. He said, you know, a thorn tree doesn't produce figs, figs. You know, you know them by your, their fruit. You will know them by their fruit. You will know them by their fruit. In other words, then it could matter what they say they are, you know them by their fruit. You just watch. You just hide and watch, you know. And you can see, you, you can see, you can judge your own self. Listen, you can judge your own self by judging how, how, what fruit you see for yourself producing. Now, I'm not you don't get down on yourself, you did yourself, but you know right away. You, did, you know, like last weekend, if I, if I go off on my, somebody I love, you know, I go off on the so I get mad about you, something, you know, you know. Leave me alone. <laughs> you know, I want to be left alone. You, you ever get that one? You get to go work. Well, obviously, I could look, I could stand outside myself and look at myself and say, you know what? He's not walking in the spirit. <laughs> I don't see any joy, peace, patience, long suffering being manifest in this guy right now. You know? I'm not saying he ain't saved, but he sure isn't accessing the realm of glory. He's accessing the realm of his flesh. So th th that's when you go, listen, th this is this is why first John 1 9. I, you know, I don't care what somebody teaches, first John 1 9 is not just for an unbeliever. Right. That is crazy. I love some of the stuff this guy teaches. I'm not wishing nothing. That ain't right. First, he starts out the letters written to the church. He said, if you if you confess your sins, he's faithfully just. He's faithfully just. He's faithfully just. That justice means he judges. He's faithfully just what? To forgive your sins and cleanse you and cleanse, they cleanse, cleanse you from all unrighteousness or iniquity the propensity to sin he not only he deals with the, the act the initial act of where you missed it but he works, he's working on the, the thing that causes you to keep doing it mm -hmm. that area of your mind or your soul that is that is a skew I like that word a skew where'd that come from the angel said that a skew or off, kill, off target, it's off, off you know, or you can just screw it up. How about that? That part of it, he wants to get that right. See, this is where, listen, you come into the heavens. Let me, I want to teach you something. Look at this, teach you something. Got to teach you something. You, you, you go into, boy, to get this stuff dealt with, you have to go into the heavens. Amen. Holy Mary, I thought we were going to have one now. No, you can go to heaven now. The veil, the veil is torn. Yeah, right. At one time, only the high priest could go into the heavens. You think he was just walking back in there in a, in a back room where there was a box with some wings over it? He was, the, the curtain was solid. It was about that thick. It was historic, but it was about that thick. It was solid. And yet once a year, after he had he 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 had gone for Lord, he made sacrifices. He done everything. He made sure you, you, didn't, go, you didn't want to go in there unless he's right. Mm -hmm. He was translated through that thing. Yeah. He was he, he was de like on Star Trek. You know, he was and went through there. And I don't he, he wasn't going just to the back room of the temple. I believe he went into the holy of holies of the heavens. You got me? He beat me up, Scotty. This, I'm not making light of this. This was a serious thing. And this man then, and this high priest who was chosen once a year, had the blood, the blood right. of an innocent lamb, with a, a, the innocent blood, to, to, which was a type of, you know, this is shed, this something died, you know, to make up. And he presented that blood. And he, 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 and he said, he said, I, he was a representative. He was a representative of all of Israel. And he said, he said, he would say, judge us, oh God. Judge us. Let your judgment come. Let your flaming sword come and burn and destroy all that we you know, he just, he'd own up to it. He confessed it. He didn't go in there and say, hey, you know, we've done pretty good this year. You know, he didn't bring the books out and say, you know, we're, we're not in red, you know. 
He go up there and said, "Listen, we've sinned against you. We, we, I, he, no, he took it. He said it personally. He didn't say we. He said I have sinned against you. Him representing the whole nation. I have sinned against you. Judge me, O God. Judge us, O God. But because of the blood, the blood activated the mercy because it was the mercy seat. Who right. glory to God." And forgiveness was released to that nation for a whole year. And, the, and therefore the blessing could come and the curse was removed. But listen, it said, Jesus, come on. And he translated. He went to, he, he remember when, when Mary came up and found him, he said, she said, oh, Rabbi. He said, don't touch me. I'm not yet ascended to the Father. So last chapter, God said, I'm not yet, don't touch me. Why? Because he, he would have been legally impure for what if she had been touched. He said, for I void to my God and your God. And I love this, my Father and your God. Amen. I'm not yet sinning. So he was on his way up. And so he was just like the high priest. He went up. It, it said he went into the, it, it, says, that he, it says he went into the heaven. He cleansed the heaven. Listen, the heavens had been defiled by what Satan had done. Even the heavens of heavens of God. It had been, been touched it'd been, with the stain of, of, of the sin of, of Satan. In the, it's just a sustain. He went there. Listen, he went there and he put his own blood. He put his own, took his own blood. And, and he identified with mankind and said, Father, I have sinned. Yeah, we know he didn't have you. We know Jesus didn't sin, but he, he was identifying with us. He said, I have sinned. You have judged me. And then the forgiveness of the Father. God. And it said once and for all. Amen. It said it ain't got to be done again. Amen. It's done. Right, it's done. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord. blood. And that Thank blood's you, still there. That blood is still on that altar. That's, it's still on the mercy seat. I, I, I can bear. I'll bear testimony. I don't say it's flaky. I, 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 I think it's flaky to be trying to be too spiritual. But I'll tell you what. I have seen it. It's still there. It is still speaking. It's still flowing up into the Father. Thank yeah. you, Father. I've seen it. Praise the Lord Jesus. It flows. It flows into the Father. And we're in that blood. Because we're in Christ. And though we flow, we, and this is the vision. It flowed up, it's flowing up into the Father. Flowing up, and when he, as the blood flowed into the Father, we flowed into the Father. And it's just like a just, oh, I, can't, I, can't, I can't describe it. But the sense, the sense of forgiveness, the sense of love, the sense of what God has done, what God has done. And that's what's the good news. How hey, you preach stuff like this to people? Bear testimony. What's I tell you? I was going to tell you. You got to go to the heavens. Go to the heavens. The warfare. We went through war. We went through the intercession. We went through the warfare. I hear people talk intercession. We went to. We tried to call stuff out and down out. Devils out. You know, it didn't work. Got half of us killed. We were fighting for the wrong place. That's right. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Your body's down there, but your spirit's in you with Christ in the heavenly places. Amen. Right. Go to heaven. Amen. <laughs> I'll tell you, you can go to heaven. Because heaven's in the spirit, the realm of the spirit. Right. It's the spirit. Get up, put a cup of sand in here. Get over the spirit. Over the spirit moving. What you do, you just moved over into the spirit. <laughs> They start, but, but start, then let, let your eyes be open and start seeing some of this stuff that's going on with us in here. Go to heaven and get it with, with you say it. Take your heaven. Take your, take your heaven. It, it ain't going to go to heaven with you. You say it ain't going to heaven with you. It's going to stay down here in your body. Because that's what, what how, uh, house is saying. That's what Paul said. He said, I, you know, I don't know what's going on in me. He says, I, I know what to do right, but I see that when I go to do right, something causes me not to do right. Here, Romans, what, seven, seven. either? Yeah. He said, 
He said, by sign of law working within me or principle working within me, it's sin in my flesh. You know, on the inside I want to do the right thing. My spirit wants to do my flesh. You want to do something else? Leave your flesh down here. Get the spirit go up there and get it straight. Go up and say, Father, listen. Come on. You can come. See, you can come. You can come. You say, well, no man can. Can, you know, you got sin. You can see God. Come on, your body sins in your flesh. Get in your, go up in your spirit, and go before the throne. But people think I'm crazy. <laughs> go up and go up there before the Father. Say, Father, hey, you, because you're welcome there. Because the blood has made you welcome there. Amen. The blood is right. Your spirit doesn't have any sin in it. And go before the Father and say, Father, listen, judge me. Judge me, little Father. Come on. Judge me. Take care of that stuff. Because sin stains you. It stains you. You've forgiven. Praise God. But you know that you're, what you've done and stuff. It stains your mind. It stains your, your memory, your consciousness. And it comes back to, it tries to resurrect itself every once in a while and, and make you miserable. But if you go before the Father, say, Father, deal with this. Let the fire of God fall on it. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. You're up there in front of the daddy and say, Daddy, let the fire fall. Because yeah. you're safe. <laughs> and the only thing that's going to hurt is the flesh. That's what you're talking about. And that's what we want to keep nice and cozy and safe. It's the flesh. I'm not just talking about your fish. There's nothing wrong with your fish. I'm talking about that part of you. That's more, me, 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 me. Are you out there? Is anybody listening? Yeah. Cooper said, Father, Daddy, Daddy, I know. God, thank God for the blood of Jesus. Cooper, I you know, you, 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 just touch your Bible or do something. By covering, I don't care what say, by covering is Jesus. Covering is Jesus. It just, just, it's like a faith thing. Just put something on your head like this. Imagine, I said, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen. I can go over and talk to Daddy and say, Daddy, listen, this, this, this is what I've been doing. This is, this is what's going on in my life. I don't like it. I know it's not right. Do something about it, Daddy. Send the fire. Send the fire. Send the fire. I know you've forgiven me, but since the fire burned this stuff out, burn it out. That reoccur stuff that keeps coming up and making you depressed and making you fearful, making uh -huh. you keeps messing with you. Burn it! <laughs> you said, I can't go. Yeah, I thought the Bible's wrong. It, 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 the uh, restricted access has been done away with. For the believer, you're not restricted. And what you don't get to, this is, I don't get, get this out of your mind. I've talked to somebody, that just, you think, some people got this idea that when they die and go to hell, everything's going to be made perfect. Let me tell you something, once you get the works done down here, and that's what you're going to take with you. Don't you ever read the passage about? The, the wood, the hay, and the stubble. When they pile their works up, wood, hay, stubble, and gold. And the fire fell on it. Everything burned up but the gold. And the gold to God. Now, you know what I'm talking about? The gold, gold represents God. Whatever God told you to do, whatever God put on your heart to do, whatever God called you to do, whatever He put you down here, whatever purpose He created you for. That's what's going to last. That stuff's going to get burnt to hell. Sure. I didn't say you're going to hell. I said all that stuff's going to be burnt to hell. Never it's not going to be. You can take it with you, honey. Yeah. What is it, man? Well, yeah. yeah. Thank God. At least you got out. Amen. You know, you're fine. Praise the Lord. Well, praise God. It's too late to start on the message again. <laughs> A body to express fully the power of the Spirit, the unseen. His kingdom come, His will be done on earth, on, on earth, as it is on earth. 
on earth as it is in heaven. That's what the world of the Father is. Amen. So I didn't get to that, but if we get to that, we can say plenty of time to teach you. We need some, need some, some newbies in here to listen to that anyway. Y'all are all old seasoned. Yeah, come. Come in. Come for the Lord, for sign, for ease, for work. You're trying to build a big ministry. You're trying to get people, get the kingdom. How about that? Amen. See, that's, what the, that's the deal. You get focus on the kingdom instead of the... We're talking about this morning. People get in trouble trying to build big churches, big big ministries. Got all that. It's not that uh, who, who, who you build it for? God pays for whatever, whatever he he he, he orders. He pays. He, that's absolutely true. That's a that's a dog got it. You know that. At least two people in the world know that. That's why I said stuff. I mean, I'm not always if something starts going south on me, I know right away. I done got out, out beyond my metron or whatever God called me to do and told me to do. I mean, every Sunday I check the offer. I, I go by the more said the offer if I'm missing God or not. You think that, it ain't all about money. It's all about, listen, it's, it is. It's not about money. It's like, Daddy, do you approve of this? Is this, is this, is this all right? You don't know, like I sit down after sitting up here and, and sit down with him and say, "Listen, Daddy, I'm sorry. I didn't do it. So I ain't right. I could get out. Of what you got to work with? I ain't got it all. I got to all. I got to work with." That's a fruit of the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, oh, I'm drunk. Ah, I love my Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise See, it's hard for me not to believe in the right. <laughs> That's be like, she's she will disappear. I tell Papa, I said, please, I'm gonna disappear. You'd be looking one minute, I'm there, and the next minute I'm like, what happened to him? And some people say, man, I'm glad he's gone. I don't care. Woo! Why can't y'all get drunk? You didn't have no problem in the natural life, didn't you? You got to drink it in. You got to drink it in. You got to have cravings. A good drunk gets up in the morning craving. Can't wait till the liquor store opens up. Come on, get that. Oh, come on. I'm talking about, I ain't talking about a natural drink. Really. A, a good Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about that kind of stuff. <laughs> Can't wait till it opens up. <laughs> it don't ever close. It don't close at night. You got it. Woo! Shakalabasa. We can all have a fit. We don't need nobody around here to get scared. I need nobody in here to get scared right now. Except maybe he might be getting scared. I would not be getting scared. He's raising this stuff. <laughs> you remember we had the meeting one time in the tent building? It, it, and the Holy Ghost fell in there. I, I think somebody out there was raised up did like that in Dalton that the James Mitchell brother was holding the communion in Troy. The, <laughs> the fire guy hit him and he went, whoa! He threw the communion up there and fell up in the drum set. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and we had a visitor that night. <laughs> And then God said, that's not wrong. <laughs> God wouldn't do that. <laughs> he said, well, I didn't hear it say he didn't do it. I did that. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> he went, you know, that's a memorable experience. That's what you grew up in. A long time ago. A long time ago. We need to do it again. Amen. No. Huh? Yeah, I, I think there is something to be said for that. I think that, that God 
some of our heritage, we need to, you know, this sounds 